Let me now turn to the occupied Palestinian territory. We have some updates on Gaza and the West Bank from our colleagues in the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. In Gaza City, we, along with our partners, are providing services to tens of thousands of people, including those displaced over the past four weeks from besieged North Gaza. Yesterday, one of our local partners was able to collect solid waste that has piled up along Tarek bin Zayad Street. In multiple locations, partners are providing mental health and psychosocial support sessions, including for people newly displaced for North Gaza governorate. However, what the humanitarian community is able to deliver falls far short of the massive needs in Gaza. Once again, OCHA calls for rapid, unimpeded humanitarian relief into and across the Strip. International humanitarian law demands that civilians have access to the essentials they need to survive, which is food, shelter, medical care, and other critical assistance. Our humanitarian colleagues also stress that civilians in the north and across Gaza must be protected. And now turning to the West Bank, OCHA reports that multiple operations by Israeli forces in the north this week included airstrikes and other lethal warlike tactics which appear to exceed law enforcement standards. According to initial information, eight Palestinians were killed and four others injured during Tuesday's operation in Jenin, Tubas, and Tolkarm. Meanwhile, OCHA says that from October 29th to November 4th, Israeli settlers carried out 35 attacks against Palestinians that caused casualties or property damage, including to olive trees that were vandalized. Since October 4th, OCHA has documented 177 settler incidents directly related to the olive harvest in 73 communities across the West Bank, most of which caused casualties or property damage. Our humanitarian colleagues also report that operations by Israeli forces and movement restrictions have made access to health care across the West Bank increasingly challenging since October of last year, particularly in refugee camps and Area C. We, along with our partners, are responding by scaling up support to communities, including by providing more than 36,000 primary health care consultations across refugee camps and through mobile health clinics in Area C last month. The UN Population Fund is also supporting mobile health teams, but funding shortfalls, as we often mention, are a growing problem. UNFPA warns that without renewed funding, 96 Palestinian com communities could lose out on these important services next year. And now something that uh, was just published, I just want to alert you that the integrated phase classification analysis, the, there's a new IPC uh, analysis, the team published its uh, analysis report uh, that we were expecting on Gaza. So according to the alert uh, issued by the IPC's famine review committee, there's a strong likelihood that famine is imminent in areas within the northern Gaza Strip. Uh, the alert further underscores that the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip, as we have just detailed, is extremely grave and rapidly deteriorating. They're calling for immediate action within days, not weeks, and this action is required from all who are directly taking part in the conflict or who have influence on its conduct to avert and to alleviate this catastrophic situation. So this is what I have on this. The full report, the full alert is now online and available and includes, of course, a lot more details. Let me now turn to Lebanon. Today, another humanitarian convoy delivered essential supplies, including ready-to-eat meals and hygiene kits, to displaced people in the south of the country. Uh, UNRWA, as well, delivered medical supplies and fuel to tired district also in the south. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says that the ongoing hostilities continue to take an unacceptable toll on civilians. OCHA repeats that upholding international humanitarian law is not optional and all parties must ensure the protection of civilians and civilian objects, including homes and essential infrastructures in all circumstances. Meanwhile, the UN Refugee Agency is telling us that in just six weeks, 510,000 people 
have now fled to Syria, 68% of whom are Syrians returning to communities already devastated by years of conflict there. And staying in Lebanon, you will have seen earlier today that uh, we shared a statement issued by our peacekeeping colleagues in southern Lebanon this morning. Uh, this was in response to an incident that happened yesterday. Two excavators and one bulldozer belonging to the Israel Defense Forces destroyed part of a fence and a concrete structure in a unifilled position in Ras Nakura. In response to an urgent protest by UNIFIL, the IDF denied that any activity was taking place inside the peacekeepers' position. Nonetheless, our peacekeeping colleagues remind, remind all parties of their obligation to ensure the safety and security of UN personnel and property and to respect the inviolability of UN premises at all time. And that statement uh, was sent to you this morning.